and we are live. Hello, homemakers and everyone in the chat or on the replay, if you're watching this on the replay. Tonight, we welcome Kate Caden from Making Frugal Living Fun. She's going to give us tips on how to make frugal living fun and tell you why she thinks having a budget is important, not just for her family, but for yours as well. But before we bring Kate on, welcome to Homemaking with Purpose, where we bring to you the best ideas, interviews, and information on YouTube. And today's episode of Homemaking with Purpose is brought to you by Apron Diva, my online apron boutique. Pretty and practical, we believe that an apron can be a homemaker's best accessory, and we invite you to please come on over and check us out. We've still got our Cyberfest going on, and just about everything is on sale. So please do come over and check us out. Visit us at www.aprondiva.com. And like I said earlier, hello to everyone in the chat. And let's bring Kate on. Hey, Denise. Hi, everyone. Hello to everyone. Okay, you're going to need to turn. Uh, you've got your um, Kate. something's on. I can I can hear it hey, like Denise. double Hi, talking. Everyone. Ooh. Okay, you're going to need to turn. Uh, you've got your um, something's. I think it's on your side. I can I can hear it hey, like Denise. double talking. Ooh. Okay, you're gonna need to turn. Uh, you've got your um, something. I think it's on your side. I oh. can I can hear it like double talking. Ooh. Okay. okay. I I'm so sorry, guys. I don't not sure what to turn off. Uh, do you have YouTube on? Just your just your stream. I, I'm so sorry, guys. Turn my stream off. off. And just be in Streamyard. I'm just, just in StreamYard. Your, just your stream. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. Turn my stream off. Hmm. StreamYard. <laughs> Never had this happen before. There's that. StreamYard. Never had this happen before. It just keeps there. going. Okay. Click off and then come back on. Let's try that. Okay. I'm going to leave the studio and come back. Leave studio. Okay, everybody, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. We will try to sort it out. So Miss Gray says, mute the computer. Kate, turn your volume down. It's somewhere on that side because uh, I've never had this happen before. So she'll jump back on and then we'll see, but see what happens. There's always something new to learn on YouTube. I tell you what. All right. Thank you guys for waiting. Leslie Young, um, Ronnie Weaver. All right. So now Kate's joining us again. Okay. Are we better? I think so. Woo! Okay. I'm so sorry. I don't know what I had going on there. I hey, it doesn't matter. We got it sorted out. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. Hello, 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 Kate. And I have to tell you, I am just so glad you were able to join us. I, I really am. And you're one of the first people that I've seen that really made me think that creating a budget just might be fun. Yay! <laughs> it's like I tell you what, for most people, budget is a dirty word. <laughs> yes. I, I think that people always associate a budget with uh, being very limited. And it's, they don't like those restrictions of a budget, but I have found that in my practice of budgeting, I've actually learned to love it. I actually do think it's fun because it gives me like a roadmap of where my money is going to go. And I've just become so accustomed to it that it's really free. It gives me more freedom, quite okay. the opposite of feeling restricted. Well, I can tell that you take the topic seriously but you just inject so much humor in it. And I must say, I love that. Thank you. <laughs> Denise, right. 
That was one of the favorite things. When you and I first started conversing, you were saying you were watching one of my videos and you were laughing, I think, with your sister. Mm -hmm. And I swear that's actually one of my goals is because I think money is such a serious topic for many people. And it is. But if we can make it fun, then people won't be as afraid to talk about it. And that is my hope. Okay. Well, let me just share with the people real quick. And I'm uh, I'm going to have to talk through as I switch screens because when I don't, I mess it up. Yeah. So I am going to share the screen so that you guys can see Kate's channel. For those of you that are new to her, and she has a lovely channel that um, she shares lots of information with her viewers, and now with all of mine in regards to frugal living, saving money, and budgeting. And uh, you can just kind of see here some of the kinds of things that she talks about. And I think it is so funny that in so many of her videos, she's got this coffee cup hiding half of her face. So evidently, coffee is one of the things that she really enjoys. <laughs> That's right. All right. So viewers, if you have questions for Kate, don't forget, you got to put four question marks in front of them and behind them. I'm going to try to stay on top of the questions. Um, if I miss some uh, Mickey Blue Skies, my assistant is on with us and she can kind of help me stay on track of that as well. And again, hello, hello, hello to everyone in the chat. So let's go ahead and get started. So Kate, one of the things that you are quick to talk about on your videos is that, well, shall we say your lackluster cooking skills? <laughs> I just thought it was hilarious the way you said you were doing a crock pot chicken pot pie and you said there will be no dashing and no sprinkling. No dashing and no sprinkling. You're quick to tell us it's important to eat at home. So tell us about that. Tell us why there's no dashing and no sprinkling. Ah. Uh. You know, the irony of it, I don't really understand. My parents both cook very well and just, I don't know, it never became something that I got into as far as like, I do basics, Denise, you know, I can do the basics. I can, you know, make some chicken breast and like the basic stuff. We make eggs, you know, we, we uh, make quesadillas, like the easy stuff, but, is, but you're not going to see me making a roast. You okay. know what I mean? And like when people are like back in the past, they'd be like, oh, Kate, I ate this. Do you want me to send you the recipe? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I thought you were going to say yes. No, because I'm not going to make it. <laughs> now, this is all pre crock pot obsession. I'm obsessed with the crock pot right now. You probably just saw the video that obviously the no dashing, no sprinkling. But my goal, Denise, is to get a little bit more comfortable so I can make some things. But again, I'm a single mom. I uh, work full time outside the house. I have a channel. I'm a choreographer. I need it to be easy breezy. You know what I mean? Okay, I got you. Well, then you <laughs> need to start following my channel a little bit more because I did. I'm going to be working on for aprons. next year. Pardon? I want one of your aprons. Well, hey, I'm going to show you that website again later on, and you can certainly pick one up. And since we're talking about aprons, as you can see, our featured apron for this week is hanging on the door. But um, I'm going to be working on a series that young homemakers can use to like quickly get meals on the table because that's one of the struggles that many of them have. So I'm going to be working on that. But I, I thought it was just so funny because you said sometimes people put in a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a sprinkle of this and a dash of that. You said there would be no dashing and sprinkling here. It's going to be strictly by the recipe. For now. For now. Yeah. So I thought that was funny. Okay. All right. And then, okay, so now let's talk about something that's just a little bit more serious. And one of the things that you do talk about is um, you talk about we spend sparingly on the things that don't matter so we can spend on the things that do matter to us. Now, first of all, that reminds me of, of Dave Ramsey. When he says you want to live like no one else so that you can live like no one else. So that smacks a little bit of Dave Ramsey to me. So explain what your version of this mantra means. 
Well, I very much share the sentiment of what Dave Ramsey says and kind of that concept because there's sometimes when you are you're trying to save money and you're trying to get into a better position financially. Mm-hmm. And the whole thing with Dave Ramsey, live like no one else. So, you know, eventually you can live like no one else when you are taking those actions. And again, you're, you're budgeting, you're living below your means, you build your emergency fund, you're doing these things. Um, for a little bit, there could be a time of, I want to say, you know, sacrifice um, a little bit less in, in um, kind of cutting back, but it's so that you can spend your money and your time on the things that really bring you joy and that really matter. And I think that's what all of frugal living is about. It's about not being wasteful mm-hmm. and it's about putting, for me, time, money, and energy into what matters and not wasting our time and energy and money on the stuff that doesn't. Okay. I like that. All right. Um, on one of your recent videos, you talked about um, a trip that you and your family took to Disney World and uh, you and your son, Caden, and other family members, a big group of you, looks like you took a road trip in a van and went to Disney World. And um, you said you wanted to have more experiences like that because it looked like you guys had a wonderful time. So what can you tell us about creating savings goals so that we can have adventures like that. Because I've got a couple of things that I want to do for 2022. So I need to put some money back. So t- talk about that. Totally. Um, the Disney trip was a really big deal in our lives because we don't really go on vacation. And that over the last few years um, has been a, a choice. Um, we did go Anyway, I won't even get into the details. The point being, we were saving. Now, this situation was unique. And if you saw the, if um, K Squad, hi guys, I can see several of you in there. Um, we, uh, yeah, we, my from brother. K-Squad. Hang on a second. If you're here from the K Squad, drop a K Squad in the chat. I forgot to say that. I wrote myself a note to tell people to do that. But if you're here from the K Squad, I think I saw it at the top. K Squad, let us see if you're here. Oh. Um, the saving, my brother, this was like a gift from my brother. Uh, My brother, um, let me know. This is what I'm going to do for you and Caden. I really want to, my brother is a single guy, steady job, always has lived below his means. And Disney is his thing. Loves Disney. Anyway, he wanted to take us on this trip, but I also had to put aside money. So we did that money saving challenge that a lot of the case got, ah, I see you guys. Oh, hi, Allie. Hi, everyone. Um, I put that money aside. I was purposely doing intentional saving. And hopefully you guys caught my video if you're if you're brand new to me, uh, the moving in silence video, because sometimes you don't always have to talk about everything you're doing financially. I do a lot with you guys because I want you guys to hopefully be inspired. But um, sometimes it's just great to put your head down and just work hard. Um, and eventually get to the point. Yeah. So you're saying in like 2022, you have these savings goals, Denise, we're going to do a no spend January, uh, which means we're going to not be spending on the extras in January. And that's going to be our kickoff for 2022 to get into savings mode. So we can reach our goals for what we want. Okay. I'm in count me in. Yes. Now I'm saying I'm in, but I don't know what the details are. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to do a whole video. I think I can do it. So we'll see. But my husband would love it if I did a no spin January. <laughs> Trust me, he would love it. All the husbands are in favor of this. That's what I heard. <laughs> but okay, so so what you talk about then, when you talk about moving in silence, what I heard from you is not necessarily broadcasting whatever it is that you're going to do, but to just do it. Just put some things down on paper. Because if, if you don't write it down, it doesn't happen. But put some things down on paper, put it in your planner, set some goals, and just kind of silently work towards that. Yep. Sometimes, just sometimes when people say things out loud, I'm not saying you should never, because there's, mm-hmm. you know, there's sometimes that's very appropriate. But a lot of people, I've, especially these days, because of social media, they're like, 
I'm going to do this and these big announcements. I'm going to write this book. I'm going to say whatever. And then they lose momentum. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen. They feel te terrible. Everyone's asking questions like what happened here? And um, sometimes you just got to keep your head down and just get it done. The action is going to speak louder than the voice, you know? I, I agree so so much with that Some because when I'm working on a writing project, I don't talk a lot about it because if I do, then it's written in my head, then I don't get back to the project. One of the things that uh, me and um, my co-host Leona Dooley are going to do next week is we're going to talk about planners and uh, getting organized for 2022. And um, I think one of the things we'll do, well, I'll do now, I'm going to share the screen and share the screen and share the screen again and find your video which is going to tell us about seven frugal tips to get started for the new year so this is one that deploys tomorrow and so you guys definitely want to check that out and when you jump on the show or on the video and um, on the premiere or on the replay um Put a little note to say here from the TNT community so that she knows that we are in the house as well. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Okay. So now let me get back over here. All right. So, um, okay. I know you got to focus on bedtime, so I don't want to keep you too oh, long. I'm trying to stay on thank track. You. Thank you. All right. So one of the things that I noticed in your video from um, 30 Easy Frugal Habits, uh, Save Money and Frugal Minimalism, I thought, okay, so what does frugal mean? Tell us what that means. Define frugal for us. Frugal for me, I'm going to put it very simply, like my, my most basic, my most simple definition is not being wasteful. Okay. Easy breezy, not being wasteful. And um, I know mostly frugal, you know, a lot of people associate frugality with being cheap. And it's truly, in my mind, not the same thing necessarily. There are some frugal people that are just downright cheap. But for the most part, <laughs> and sometimes people admit to these cheap habits, but it's, it's more about um, not being wasteful, not wasting. I, I'm big on your time, your money, or your energy. Okay, time, money, and energy. And you know, as you mentioned that, I realized that energy gets more important the older you get because I don't have as much energy as I had at one time. And so I really have to think about what are some of the things that I choose to engage in. So now since we're talking about frugal, being frugal, and let's look at what are some frugal habits. And in the video you gave 30, but let's just look at some tips, five tips maybe, but what are some easy frugal habits and tips that you think would be important for many of us to consider incorporating into our lifestyle? Oh, there are so many. Um, let's start with avoiding hot mess mode. Oh, so <laughs> I did. I think in a, almost an entire video on this once. Um, when you are now not calling anyone a hot mess, I'm a hot mess sometimes. We all are a hot mess. Everybody can relate to a hot mess once in a while. Please type hot mess if you've ever been a hot mess. Oh, well, um, I guess I have to go over there and type it in. You know, and what happens when we're a hot mess is we are unprepared and we didn't pack a lunch. So we're in a panic and we go spend $15 at lunch somewhere we don't need. Um, and then we didn't have dinner planned. So we drive through the fast food and we showed up where we needed to be unprepared. So you had to buy something at the last minute. If we can, <laughs> Sheila, you call me a hot mess. Um, if we can be a little bit more prepared and think ahead on things it uh, really helps not break the bank later if we can avoid that. And that's probably something people don't talk about, <laughs> avoiding hot mess mode, but it's a thing. You guys all know this. You get to, you get to work late, you drop off your kid late. There's like, it's, it's like, and it's like a snowball, right? If we can stop the snowball, <laughs> this is the bad snowball. Debt snowball is good, hot mess snowball, bad. 
so that's one. Um, the other one I would say um, is, I mean, there's a million of them, but I really enjoy <laughs> some, some hot mess express. <laughs> that's, that's my girl, hot mess express. <laughs> um, the other thing I was going to say is I, I, I know uh, Denise, you, you noticed this too, but I do no spend Sundays mm -hmm. and no spend Sundays just every Sunday. It is a frugal habit or routine of mine that I don't spend money um, most of the time if I can avoid it. Just like there is a day of rest the way <laughs> it was intended. I give my wallet a rest. And so that means you're only spending six days a week and you've got one day where you can just look forward to, to just chill. Okay. So I really like that and no spin Sunday. So tell us what are some of the things that you do for a no spin Sunday? And let's say we wanted to give our wallet a rest for a day. How can we, what would be the best day for us to do it? Number one. And how can we incorporate that into our lifestyle? So I would say pick the day that makes the most sense for me. Um, I'm home on the, like, I like to be home on the weekend. I have plans sometimes, but if you've watched me for a little bit, I love no plans mm -hmm. or I want to be invited, but I'm not coming. That kind of thing. <laughs> Can anyone relate to that? Like you, I'm, I'm a very friendly introvert. So um, when I can stay home, I really enjoy it. So Sunday makes sense for me. I try not to run errands on Sundays, you guys. Mm -hmm. I try not to get in the car. I try to just be home, cleaning the house, getting ready for the week, starting to do crock pot meals as I'm starting to share with you. There's more on that. And I like to be home and I like to be cozy. Um, but if there, if Sundays, I mean, I don't know what you guys have got going on. Say, say you have church on Sunday. Sunday's your day to move around. Whatever it is, You've got to do whatever day works. So maybe it's Saturday. Maybe it's even Wednesday for whatever reason. Wednesday nights, you don't go out to dinner. Whatever works for your family, because Sunday's not going to work for everybody. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like the no spend Sunday idea, but I was thinking on those days that we go to church and then some of my, like my sister-in-law, well, this was the days before COVID. They would want to go out to dinner after church. While well, these days, people right. are going home after church. But that is a way to have a no spin Sunday. You go to church and you put in your tithes or your offering or whatever, but you go home and have dinner at home instead of eating out or instead of going shopping after church. So that could be a good way or Saturday too. But I, I like that idea. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. We moved up on my question. So now I got to back oh, up and see where it was. So we went from number five to number 14. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Let's go. You want to go back to number five and talk about emergency funds? Because that's another really important. Yes. Thing. Okay. Oh, sorry, Buns. My cat is always glued to me. You guys know Buns. Some of you know Buns, right? Um, one of my biggest, biggest life changers for me in my, in my frugality world, my money world is creating an emergency fund. And this was something that I don't think I really even thought about until later in life. And if you can get three to six months expenses under your belt, so when when stuff happens, because stuff will happen, this will change your life that you won't be in panic mode. I have a couple videos on that. If you just type in Kate Caden Emergency Fund, you will find a couple things on that. It is just priceless to me. Okay. And the other big overall arching message that I like to share, hey, Pamela, um, is, is to always, always live below your means. And that's like the, if you can always live below your means, you're never going to be in debt. You're never going to be overspending. And that's, that's key. Oh, I got that spelled wrong. I better type that in again. Oh, live below your minas. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to redo that so that uh, <laughs> fair. Okay, so live below your means. And you talk about that a lot. And um, you even talk about that in regards to if, if, if you have a two-income family. Touch on that just real briefly. 
if I, if you have a two income family, mm -hmm. Oh, Oh, what would that be like again? Okay. Listen, <laughs> if you have a two income fam, now there's, I mean, there's, there's, I, I, I think about this sometime too. Um, if you have a spouse or a partner and you've got two incomes, if you really wanted to go to extremes, because I talked about this in the 30 frugal habits, you could even try to live off of just one person's salary and save and invest with the other. I know that's like a big thing because some people, they adjust their lifestyle to what's coming in and you could do that, of course. But if you are fortunate to have two incomes, you can um, really play with that. You know what I mean? I do. <laughs> I do. A single woman, I'm like, what would that be like? But that is, it's it's uh, the world's your oyster, I think, when you've got two. But again, people have more children. People have different situations. Depends where you live. So, um, but there's definitely more wiggle room than the. So you know, like for me, I always have additional jobs on top of my job because I'm always trying to make more money so that I can have a better future for my son. Okay, let me ask you about this. In one of your videos, you talked about adapting the budget and i'm just going to write that in there too adapting the budget and it looks like we might have a question coming up adapting the budget but let's address this first and um it's spelled wrong but that's okay no i better not i better get it right in case i decide to um there we go so in one of your videos, you talked about you use gas as an example and that you budgeted, we'll say, 60, between 50 and $60 a month for gas. But that particular month, you only spent $40 for gas. And so you saved the other $20. Now, my thinking would have been, oh, I saved $20. So now I can buy that thing that I've been trying to get or I can go to the movies, but you didn't do that. You used that $20, <laughs> you put it into savings. So talk about that. Talk about what you meant by adapting the budget and something about a zero waste, a zero, a zero budget, something like that. Yeah. Zero based budget. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So when I, th this I learned from Dave Ramsey. Is a zero base budget. So when you create your budget, I plan every single dollar where it's, I tell every dollar where to go every single month, just like Dave Ramsey taught me. You and I tell just, every dollar where to go. I tell every dollar, every dollar gets a job. They get an assignment and they are deployed to this, this assignment. And so when people are like, well, how much do you have left at the end? Zero, but not really, because I put it where it belongs. Like, say I had a savings goal of $200 that is going into savings mm -hmm. and everywhere is assigned where it's going. But the, the thing about adapting a budget is there's a lot of people that set their budget in theory and then they forget about it, set it and forget it. But the actual numbers don't come out that way in the month. The gas example, for example. So say I budgeted 40 and there's $20 left. Where does that $20 go? For me right now, it would just go into savings because I don't, um, unless I, now listen, you said, why didn't you do it for fun? You can, if that if that is what you want to be doing it for. But like, for example, I would say, okay, do I want to go buy a new pair of shoes or do I want to go to Disney World? Mm-hmm. And that one was a no brainer. It was Disney world every time. And that's been my focus for a bit. So now my new one is, uh, <laughs> do I want that shirt or do I want to try to pay off my mortgage? And that's a little bit dicier and a little bit of a bigger thing, but yeah. I don't just make a budget and then walk away. You have to keep inputting what you actually spent and seeing what's actually there. Or what if your gas was $20 over? Oh, you only budgeted 40. Now you've got 60. So where's that 20 bucks coming from? Good you question. Where is he coming from? Ha! So you've got to figure it out. If you have, like, for example, say I had set aside a hundred dollars for going out to eat. Maybe it's coming from there. Cause I don't have to go out to eat. 
Wow. That's Did I just rain on some people's parade? You know what? That That is, that's genius. I like that thought. And since you brought that up, let's talk about going out to eat. In one of your uh, videos, you talked about not putting going out to eat on your food budget. Uh, now, sometimes when I would be doing the budget, I would put it under entertainment. Sometimes I'd put it under food. Why don't you put it under food? Talk about that. Because I think you just raised the point right there. Yes. Um, so the way I do it is I budget with four categories. I only have four categories. Some people have a lot. I have savings, which is like future Kate. I have household, which is everything that keeps us alive and keeps my world going around with not really extra. Mm -hmm. Your mortgage, your cell phone, gas for the car, if you had a car payment, the essentials. Then I have giving. That could be charitable donations. It could be tithing. It could be even gifts. I put anything I give away to others. And then I have my lifestyle, which is all the icing on the cake, all my choices. Mm -hmm. If I want to budget in for a massage, if I want to budget in for going out to eat, because going out to eat in my world is not essential. My groceries are, I have to nourish me and my son, but I don't need to go to the Olive Garden. And by the way... <laughs> I just did an Olive Garden crock pot chicken. So I'm just doing it from home now. Just, just know that. Watch out, Olive Garden. Just kidding. Um, but really, I don't put it with my groceries because I don't deem it essential. And the other thing I just want to share with that is when sometimes people are trying to figure out how much do I need for my emergency fund? If you look at my budget, those four categories, it's taking your household out. And it's that times how many months? Because this is, if you lose your job, you're not going to be getting massages. You're not going to be going out to eat. You know what I mean? All the choices out the window when a crisis hits. So now if you could just revisit that real uh, again real quick, and then we'll take this question. But so when you said, when you're looking at what, when you're building your emergency fund, what you want to do is take that household section out and see what that price is and double that is that what you said? um how, times how many months you want to do so if you set so if your monthly expenses are two thousand dollars your household like to keep the lights on to keep the like your life running smoothly without going to the movies without new shoes you know what i mean mm -hmm. so um if it was two thousand you want to have that six month emergency fund you're going to look for sa saving twelve thousand dollars for your emergency fund okay so a couple of people have put this comment in and so i just put in the first one but there were several with this same one i'm on disability i don't make a lot how can i live below my means when it's already low so that is a you know what i hear that question quite often and um hi blue skies um, what I'm thinking for this is, um, okay, cause she's saying it's already, how can I live below me when it's already low? Um, the first thing I would always do is look at my fixed expenses. Of course, is there anything I can cut? Do I still, am I still getting cable? Do I need it? Um, am I doing all the things around the house to keep the electricity as low as possible? Like all the fixed things I would try to get as low as possible, but sometimes even with that, and I guess it depends, um, like for disability, is there stuff you can, I mean, you're like, could you make money? Like, for example, wait, Blue Skies, do you have your own channel? Look how gorgeous she is. Does she have, <laughs> does she have her own? Because I, I clicked on you, but like, could you start a YouTube channel and start getting ad revenue? Is there any way that you can make a little money on the side to bump up your income a little bit that I would look, or is there anything that you already do that you can make money doing that you already do? Do you know she what I'm saying? my website. Like that. Yeah. Like if there's any way she can do like little side things that she likes doing that she can make some cash doing to get a little bit more income. Okay. Okay. And there was a couple other people that had something similar. Um, here was another question that uh, is from her, but I think uh, several others have this same question too. Yeah. 
the fastest way to pay down or pay off a debt. Okay, so <clears throat> from Dave Ramsey, I learned the debt snowball. And I think that is beautiful. The For people that don't know what the debt, are you guys familiar with the debt snowball? I am, but a lot of people are not. If they're not familiar with Dave Ramsey, then they've never heard of the debt. Snowball. Okay, so I, I totally would do the debt snowball. It, so what you do is you line up your debts from smallest to largest, and you pay off de- not regarding the interest rate, just smallest to largest. So if you have a hundred, a five hundred, and a thousand dollar debt, you're going to pay off that hundred dollars first. You're going to peck away at that hundred dollars till it's out of there, and then that hundred dollars you were spending every single month on that debt, taking up your time and your money, you'll roll that hundred into the five hundred. Now you're pecking away at the five hundred. And then as soon as that 500 is gone, you take what you would have done with those other debts and you roll it into the thousand until the snowball just keep look at me, just gets bigger and bigger and wipes it out. And I think that is a great way to do it because it gives you the satisfaction of I'm a list person and crossing off something off your list. You know what I mean? It's very satisfying. Yeah. It really is very satisfying to cross it off the list. So what I'm hearing you say is that if so, if you have a hundred dollar, a five hundred dollar, and a thousand dollar bill, that hundred dollar bill that you're paying twenty five dollars a month on, and then the five hundred dollar bill that you're paying seventy five dollars a month on, then you've got one for a thousand that you're paying a hundred dollars a month on. Once you get that hundred dollar a month one paid off. The $25 that you were paying on that one, you add that to the one for 500 where you were paying 50. Now you're paying 75 until yeah. that one's paid off. And then the $1,000 one that you were paying $100 a month on, now you're paying 150 on that one. Or is it 175 on that one? Well, and then, yeah, and then, I'm um, sorry, I lost, I was, I was imagining the snowball and I just, I lost track of the numbers, but you just keep rolling it into the next one, what you were, what you were spending on the other one until you wipe them all out. Okay. So guys, if you're not familiar with the debt snowball, you can just Google debt snowball and it'll pop up and it'll give you those instructions. And Kate does have a video on her channel somewhere where she talks about that too. Yeah, so I think you guys are going to go visit her. Versus the avalanche. Come visit, you guys. <laughs> yes, you guys are definitely going to want to go and visit her. Um, so Backwoods Money says um, that's what they do. They pay everything with one and save and invest with the other. So they must have two incomes there. Yes, Backroad Money. And then Yvette said that she lowered her car insurance, cut the cable, and just has internet, maybe one or two other things. Yeah, um, Blue Skies is talking about the things that she has. She'll get rid of Netflix and all those things and just get on one of her family's accounts. Yeah. Right. So Kate, the right idea. savings, household givings, lifestyle are all four of Kate's budgeting category. So thanks for putting that in for us. Um, Sheila says, wait, no, I, I clicked on the wrong one. Yvette is doing the debt snowball now. She's almost finished. Yeah. Oh, this is one I was going to ask you about. So Pamela says, use power strips on your appliances and stop the phantom electricity suck. So talk about that, because that was one of the things that on your five tips you talked about, phantom electricity. I had never heard of that. I, you know, I don't get too caught up in it, but I was told, and when I was researching stuff, that when you leave stuff plugged in and you're not using it, it is still costing you a little bit of money. Now it's not going to, I don't think it's going to be like life changing necessarily, to be honest, but it's going to affect your electricity bill. And truthfully, so I just don't leave things plugged in. Now that's not the TV. I'm not going to go, there's some people that do that, but I'm not going to go that extreme and unplug it every time I'm done using it. Uh Uh-uh. But my toaster, I don't leave plugged in. Mm -hmm. My coffee maker, I don't, you know, that one you could have used it every day. All the stuff that you just have plugged in and you never use, I, I unplug it. Because there's phantom energy being used. Okay. All right. Let's go back to um, some of the questions that I had. And what are the three most important things that frugal people do? Because you talk a lot about frugal people. So what are the three most important things that frugal people do? Three most important things. Live below your means. Budget. And save slash invest. Boom. That's what frugal people do. Okay. Say that again. 
I mean, these are like my favorite things to talk about, but really living below your means. I know we just talked about it, but like if you, oh gosh, what's that show you guys um, on that I've, I've talked about a million times, but it's, there's this woman that goes into people's houses. If you guys remember what it is, please let me know. It, it, I used to love watching it. She goes into people's houses and she looks at their budget and Denise, they're spending so far beyond their means and they're drowning. And Susie it's, Orman? It's not Susie Orman. It's like, um, oh, she's got br brown hair. No, not Marie Kondo. Um, I think it might've been on, cause it was on Amazon Prime for a bit. Oh no, I can't remember what it's called. Um, it's gonna come to me, of course, after the show. Okay, but, but anyway. But it, it, it's um, people live beyond their means till debt do us part. That's it, Diane. You oh. nailed it. Till debt do us part. And these couples, you guys, and th this could be any of us. It could be you watching right now. We don't even know what we're spending because we don't have a budget in place. And we also don't want to know. A lot of people, they don't want to know. I have, oh, you guys, I have so many people that have come to me like later in life, even friends or family members or or just um, subscribers or viewers, and they don't even want to look at, they, they just like let their bills pile up. They don't want to look at it because they, they know it's bad. But I'm telling you, the longer you wait, the longer and the more stress it's going to cause. So if we can figure out how much we, some people don't know how much they make. Hmm. Some people have no idea. They're like, I don't know, maybe this and it's they're not thinking after taxes and it's they're 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 way off because they haven't really looked into it so if you don't know how much you bring in and you don't know how much is going out there's a very strong chance that you could be in the red well not only that when you talk about how much is going out that's a, a good point because i was sitting here trying to think of i thought well i really don't have any credit cards and i thought well i do have one credit card that i use for plane tickets and stuff like that yep but then I thought, well, I have maybe a subscription to VidIQ and maybe there's something to TubeBuddy and maybe I'm uh, signed up for Grove Collaborative and I'm getting products in the mail every month or maybe I'm getting this. And I thought, oh, wait, all those things add up. They totally do. And when you put it on paper and you add them up, you're like, oh, wait a minute. And just I just want to know, I me personally don't have a problem with credit cards. Um, like meaning I don't think, cause I know like Dave Ramsey's like, don't ever use credit cards. I feel a little bit differently about that. That's not, um, if I feel like if you can use them responsibly, then it's okay. Like if you pay it off every single month, if that's a habit of yours and you are doing it like that, I don't see any problem with credit cards. Okay. Well, it's time to give away an apron note. So let me do that real quick. So for those of you here from the K-Squad, um, the apron note is, I have an online apron boutique called Apron Diva. And we put an apron note in with every order. And what an apron note is, is a word of encouragement to the homemaker, because sometimes they just don't feel appreciated. And what we say at Apron Diva is you don't choose the note. The, ch the note chooses you because the notes are just randomly assigned to an order. We have 14 different notes. And the note that we're giving today is this one. You are the COO of your home, so own it. So you're the chief operating officer of your home, so, it's, so own it. So now while um, the people are in the chat, what you want to do is tell us how is this note resonating with you? And then Mickey Blue Skies will use the comment picker and she'll pick somebody who's been making comments in the comment section to be the winner. But you will also get one as our guest. So now while they're typing in the chat, tell me, how does this resonate with you? You are the COO of your home. Own it. It resonates loud and clear. I have had to step into really owning every part of running my life. I am not sharing that responsibility with anyone. And when you are a homemaker, you have a job, you are a parent or whatever, you're a sister, you're a wife, you're a husband, you, you really have to 
step up and be responsible for what you want your life to be. And I think it is a beautiful responsibility to be the COO of your own household and a privilege. Exactly. And I have to agree with you. So what's going on in the chat? What are people saying? So Sheila says, um, I make home a safe haven, refuge from the world, a place of cozy comfort. And she says on a budget. I need to get more on a budget. And then Miss Gray says, I am in charge and they all know it. And boom, that's it. They're in charge. And then um, Leslie that. said it does resonate with her. So Leslie, let us know how that resonates. Diane loves it. And let's see. Diane, hi. So, yeah. So, so. So Terry says loud for her, but wanted to boom with her son. So he is learning, you know, people have to learn that. And some of these skills are not skills that some of us learned as a child. Others did. So, so there, yeah, there's that. So while I'm waiting for blue skies to give me the name of the person who is the winner, or I keep hearing a little noise on my phone. Let me check that to see if that's it. Um, I have the worst phone in the world. Oh no. Oh, I do. I'm getting a new one. I'm going to get, um, oh, Cal's talk is the winner. Cal, you won. Hey, Cal. Oh, I'm so happy. Yeah. For her. She's one of my longtime subscribers. And then the thing says my app is outdated. This phone is outdated. I'm Christmas. <laughs> All right. So Cal's talk is the winner. So Cal, um, you know, Cal, uh, I've got your address. So I can go ahead and send that apron note out. Apron, yeah, send the apron note out to you. And then uh, Kate, you'll need to email me your address so that I can um, send this to you. And so this is the address that I want you guys to send it to. Send it to this and that with Denise at Gmail. Don't put it in the chat. I'm sure you know that, but still, I just always have to give that disclaimer. Yeah, don't put your address in the chat. Send it <laughs> to me in the email so that um, everyone else doesn't have it as well. And then Terry DeLisle says, um, it says, I'm in control and not that the money is in control of me. Yes. That thought as well. Okay. That's what I feel about budgets, you guys. That's what I, I told. I feel like I'm in control and the money's not just running me. I'm running it. Yes. Congratulations, Cal. All right. I always say Cal is my sister from another mister. Aww. We met on YouTube. And yes. she looks like she could be one of my relatives. <laughs> All right. So let's get back at it. Thanks, Blue Skies. I see that. Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So, oh, I forgot to say, so you guys, I, I forgot to mention that, again, um, this is Cyberfest for us here on Apron Diva. So you can see this is our featured apron of the week is this one, but right here it is called L. So be sure and check us out at www.aprondiva.com. Um, your aprons are gorgeous, by the way. Oh my Thank gosh. You. I was showing, I was showing my best friend uh earlier today. I was like, check this out. We were just like put, trying to like put our favorite ones in order. We just loved it. It was beautiful. Well, thank you. We're uh, getting close to the end of uh, what we have for this year. Mm. And we've already got our order ready for spring. But it's just been really fun. Having a business is more than a notion, Kate. I'm sure you know that. But <laughs> it, it's been a learning experience. Definitely been a learning experience. So now let me just ask you real quick. I would love to talk about aprons forever, but <laughs> so what are some um, frugal tips that you can talk to mom and dads about when it comes to grocery shopping? Like, what can you say to them about that? So I don't know if anyone saw me and um, under the median just did a, a collab recently hope and larry who are wonderful people by the way um we did uh talking about inflation how that's kind of affecting things and we were oh. primarily <laughs> oh 
we are primarily talking about uh, how to deal with the food situation. But frugal tips when it comes to food, I would say, the. I mean, in this one, this sounds really basic, but like, first of all, ask your family what they want to eat. And I know that sounds like a weird thing. It depends on what your family dynamic. If you've got like 10 people, they're just probably getting what they, you know, but for me, it's just me and Caden. We talk about it. Hey, what do you want to eat? What can, you know, what do you really want to eat? I want him to feel excited about food. So I, um, and I know that's not always possible, but for us, we like talk about, okay, what are you, what are you actually going to eat? There's no use. Let me make sure you're all listening. There's no use <laughs> in buying a ton of produce, thinking you're going to eat healthy and then throwing it all away a week later. Anybody ever guilty of that? You're like, Ooh, we're starting salads. And then it just rots in there and you didn't eat it and your fruit spoils and all that stuff. So make sure you're getting what you want to eat. Make sure you're getting the nutri nutrients, but get what you want. Um, if you're trying to, you know, cut back a little bit, um, like price wise, I would say try going meatless on a few meals per week, do a little less meat, maybe have a meatless Monday or, you know, vegetarian options, you know, try different things like that. Or maybe just less meat where meat is not the star, like the rope, you know, maybe like meat on the side, if you will, or like a topping instead of making it the, the, the main event. So you can get more use out of it. Um, me and we, we meal plan ish. Uh, if I had a bigger family, I would probably do a more strict meal plan, but we always just make sure we have certain like quicker meals that we always can turn to, um, on a dime. So we're not like running to the fast food place at the last minute. Um, my store has an online app. I don't know if yours does with coupons. I don't know which stores you guys grocery shop at, but ours, you can do, you can, I don't, I'm not a paper clip coupon clipper. Mm -hmm. I did that for a time in the past, but I don't do that now, but I have a digital app where I, I use coupons, which is really great. Kroger uh, certainly has like their um, Kroger plus card and you can like get digital coupons through that and savings by using your plus card, your Kroger card in the store, big savings. Yeah. Hey, Valerie. <laughs> Ah, hi, Team Gert. I'm sorry. Hi, guys. Hi, K-Squad. Hi, guys. Hi, Katrina. All right. So, but you were telling us some tips on how we can um, um, save yeah, money. With yeah. food. I, I was also wondering, too, you were talking about um, unpaper toweling. Tell us about that. How do you unpaper towel? So... I used to use paper towels for everything. And I just, I remember talking about this, I think in a video in 2019, I just had a realization, like I was buying the big packs of paper towels and I was like, $27 um, now. So unpaper towel, they're $27 for a big pack. Yes, it is ridiculous. And I thought, look at this $30 or so I'm going to spend and it's going to go right in the trash. And it just kind of like, I was buying like, I'm not going to stop buying toilet paper, but I was buying toilet paper, paper towels, tissues. And I'm like all this, and I'm just going to throw it out. So I was realizing that a bad habit I was doing was even every time I wash my hands, I just grab a paper towel, throw it out, grab a paper towel, throw it out. What am I doing? Like I could, so I started using, but, uh, oh, and even just cleaning the counters, paper towels, paper towels, paper towels, just picture the rolls just flying around my house. That's what I was doing. And so I started doing, um, <laughs> just start, I started using my kitchen towels, microfiber cloths, everything that I have. You could rip up old t-shirts. I mean, like you don't use all the paper towels, but the one caveat, and some people tried to, tried to fight me on it. I'm not picking up cat puke with my towels. I'm not doing it. I'm not going that far. Cat puke. Cat puke gets a paper towel. Okay. I think when I was a young mom with kids at home, I remember I did stop buying paper towels for a while because we were using a lot of them and they weren't as expensive back then. But then it's all relative when you look at the cost of the dollar then and how much you made. But I just started using regular towels and kitchen towels and things like that. But today I do use paper towels. And I remember one day my husband was helping me do dishes 
And I looked over there and he was using the paper towels to dry the dishes. <laughs> and then he, he kept taking out a new one. He would dry the dishes. Then he's wiping down the counter. And I was like, honey, why are you using paper towels for that? Because, you know, paper towels are pricey right now. He says, well, because they're handy. I went and got him a kitchen towel and brought it over there and handed it to him. <laughs> and I'm like, I totally did that in the past. Totally. Oh, my. Okay. All right. Well, let me ask you this. Yeah, that was really kind of funny, though. I just had to talk about how to unpaper towel. Saves a ton of money. Yeah. So one of the things you did mention on another day was that minimalism helped you somewhat to maintain your frugal lifestyle. So tell me, what is minimalism to you? What does that mean to you? And how does it help you make frugal living fun? It's funny, my my like vision of minimalism is very, for me, very parallel with uh, with frugality, kind of in my in, like in my own weird way. Again, um, it's for, for me for minimalism. Sorry, my cat is just he he can't not be it's okay. <laughs> is, but again, uh, like using it, it's it's kind of like it's very similar in my mind to the frugality you're not wasting your resources on stuff that you don't need minimalism really changed my life my favorite ones are uh like the minimalists they have a documentary if no one if you've never had an introduction to minimalism and you, you've never heard of it Maybe you've kind of caught wind of it. If you watch that documentary filmed by Matt Diavella, he's a huge YouTuber now, and the minimalists are, of course, uh, who are the two main ones, they really just tell these stories that make you understand that maybe we don't need all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And the other one that I love is Joshua Becker. I don't know if anyone's heard that name before. Mm -hmm. um, I saw you... Um, you had the minimal mom on last week, was thrilled to see Dawn, love her. And she's, uh, I believe she's interviewed Josh, Joshua Becker before. Um, they, they just have such great content on how not to fill your home with stuff you don't need so you can focus on the stuff that matters to you. I like that that thought too, that you fill your home with the things that matter to you. And then Don, of course, talked about, do you want to have options or do you want to have less stress with managing those options? And I like the idea of, of less stuff to manage so that I'm not stressed with that. So. Y yes. The, I, I actually think I talk about that in my video tomorrow. The taking care of that much inventory in your house all the time. Every time you bring something in, you got to manage it. You got to mm -hmm. dust it. You got to keep it from breaking. Uh, I, uh, I just had to get a new vacuum because it, my other one died and I needed a new vacuum. And I was, I was stressing about it. Like what, which vacuum am I going to get? That's going to actually last a long time. I'm going to get a ton of value. Where am I going to store it? Cause some vacuums are so bulky and the stick vacuum, if you guys thought I was all about the Dyson, the Love it. one, but I've had so many problems. I feel like my one was faulty, but I love the, the convenience of it, right? It's so mm -hmm. light. You actually want to vacuum, but I also want to have a, do you have two vacuums or do you just have the one? I just have one. Well, actually I do have two. I have a little Bissell that's that plugs in and it's small and it's lightweight. And then I got my stick vacuum, my Dyson. And I love it because of the ease, the convenience, the different attachments. But, you know, it does have a short shelf life. So it's like you plug it in and then you run it for about 20 minutes and then you got to stop and plug it in again. But I don't have a lot of carpet. So it usually will work for me. Or when I move to a different room, I can plug it in and then do some other stuff. And then it's ready to go again. But yeah, Fly Lady Cat talks about having a big upright that when you're making good little lines in the carpet and making it look all neat and pretty, when you're doing deep cleaning, you have one of those for that purpose. But when you're just doing your daily home blessing or your weekly home blessing, you're using your lightweight vacuum. 
Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And but oh man. So now I have one that I plug in and mm -hmm. it's a bigger one and it sucks. And that's all we really want out of a vacuum. A that vacuum it just sucks suck. everything up off the floor. Okay. Yeah, that's what we want. But it's but it's it's powerful, doesn't run out. But anyway, it's working right now. But my point being, the more I'm like a I don't know, Denise, do you have a house full of like knickknacks? Are you a knickknacky person? Do you like stuff? Not as many as I used to, but I still have quite a few because then you have to lift them and you have to dust them. I'm working on Swedish death cleaning. So Ooh. I don't have as much as I did at one time. And since I've been doing the fly lady cleaning method for the last three or four years, I don't have near as much stuff because I don't want to have to move it around and I don't want to have to manage it. I'm just really just gradually just getting rid of stuff. And one of my big goals for 2022 is I'm going to complete the, sweet, the Swedish death cleaning process. I'm going to get rid of a lot of stuff. Because as you can tell, I am definitely a woman of a certain age. And my kids don't want all my stuff. <laughs> It's like they got their own stuff. And I used to wonder why Don would always talk about stuff. You know, why did you just call it stuff? But that's what it is. It's stuff. There's just so much of it. So many different categories. It's just stuff. And you just need to get it out of your house. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. So what are your top five frugal living habits? My top five? Oh, my gosh. Um, so... Well, I feel like we've done the, well, okay. Can I kind of give you like my frugal routines? I would sure. say like more like what I do habitually. Sure. Um, one of my biggest frugal routines is I actually look at my, I sit down every morning here at my computer. I brew my coffee and I actually look at my accounts almost every single day. I take wow. five, 10 minutes, maybe it only takes about five minutes. I just look through my accounts, make sure there's nothing, no weird withdrawals for some reason. Now, some people get a hold of your credit card, some scammy people. I would just make sure, kind of take a browse of my my whole financial picture. And I, if I did any uh, transactions, I make sure to enter it into every dollar so that my budget is accounted for. That's something I do every day. It's very quick. And I pair it with drinking coffee so it's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Um, another frugal routine that I have that I think has become really beneficial. And I think especially in these days right now with gas prices and everything is I batch my errands. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to go to the grocery store, I'm also going to check my PO box and I'm also going to go to the bank. If I need to go to the bank, I'm going to do it all while I'm out. I'm not going to be doing these one-offs here and there and wasting. Yeah. I just try to do it all at the same time. I feel like it's a money saver and a time saver and Makes an sense. energy saver. You know what I mean? Like you just, just get it all done. Mm -hmm. Um, well, kind of what we were talking earlier about, uh, like the adjusting the budget, uh, a frugal routine of mine is when I underspend, I just automatically, so I don't have to think about it unless there's something I'm really needing automatically put it in savings automatically into the savings bucket what do i do with this 20 bucks savings don't even think about it automatically right into savings um i only go grocery shopping one time a week that's that, huge that that's something i learned from jordan page i don't know if you've ever watched jordan page like a while ago and that has stuck with me going to the grocery store more than once a week will make you buy more stuff. I try to make sure I have a strategic list and I go in there prepared one time a week, no matter what. And the last one I would tell you at this time, th this is what I keep this going all year long, but I have a frugal splurge list. So when Christmas or my birthday comes around and people say, Kate, what do you want? I don't just go, oh, I don't know. Another sweater would be great. I'm like, oh, I would love a bag of coffee. <laughs> I would love this book. I've been hearing all about this book. I would love this. You know, I, I keep like a, a frugal splurge list or if no one's buying it for me, it's like kind of my thing. Like if I really did want to save up for something and I need that thing, I know what I want. I keep a list, like a Amazon list and, you know, just you know, know what you need, especially come Christmas. People, people are going to ask you and tell them. That's such a good idea. And I was looking to see where I had my planner, but 
I don't have it up here with me, but one of the things in my Inkwell Press 360 disc planner, which is what I've been using for about the last five or six years, they've got a page in there that's for bucket lists and a page in there for gifts. And then not only gifts for other people so that you can keep track of gifts that you're buying for others, how much you spent or when, and you can keep it all year long. But there is also a place where you keep a list of gift items for yourself so that when people ask you, what are some things that you need or want, you can give them items on that list. So yeah, that's that's great. I like the idea of that splurge list. Mm -hmm. okay. So the, um, the one other thing that we talked about, and I wanted to be sure that I addressed tonight was why is saying no important to choosing a frugal lifestyle? I thought that was so important when I looked at a couple of your videos and you mentioned that. And I think about how often I say yes and don't often say no enough. So tell us about that. In, in my opinion, I think learning to say no has, again, changed my life because when you say no to what you don't want to spend your time doing, you're saying yes to the things that you enjoy and feel fulfilling. Mm -hmm. So by saying no, you are saying yes to you. And I have been, I am a recovering people pleaser my whole life. And when you say no to the things that do not bring you value, you're saying yes to all the things that do. I like that. I'm writing that down. When you say <laughs> no to something else, you are saying yes to you. Yeah. When it doesn't bring you value. Psh. Okay. So now let me get that up there. So when it doesn't bring you value, when you say no to something that's not bringing you value. So when they ask you, can you be on this board? Can you lead this committee? It's like, no, I'm sorry, because then you're saying yes to some free time for yourself or something that you choose to do. I like that. How many of you out there have been longtime people pleasers and need to learn to say no? So drop it in the chat. Say no to something else is saying yes to you. So drop a note that says, I'm saying yes to me. Drop, I'm saying yes to me in yes. the chat. <laughs> yeah, yes to me. And I, I'm trying to do more of that. Mickey Blue Skies won't say that I am, but I really am trying to do more of that. I'm saying yes to me. You know, the other thing, can I just add to that? When sure. you say no, I'm sorry. When you say yes, is something you don't really want to do, you're not going to bring your best energy toward it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I, when you invited me to come here, I was so excited, Denise. I was honored and I was thrilled and I couldn't wait to come. So I'm here and I'm ready to do this with you. I was like, here we go. But if, but for some reason, if, if this was not something I wanted to do, you're, when you don't, when you don't show up, as you, your energy is down. Your quality of work is worse. Like, don't waste your time. Don't waste other people's time with your mediocre energy. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So is there anything you want to add? Um, I just want to say that I am so appreciative First of all, for you having me on tonight. Oh, thank you. You're quite welcome. I'm so glad you were willing to come because Mickey Blue Skies and I talked about the different spaces we wanted to try to fill so that we can bring strategic information to our viewers. And we, she was the one that found you and she said, oh, you've got to check this woman out. You will <laughs> love her. And as you know, I watched a lot of your videos and I thought this woman is crazy. I love her. You are so humorous. You just make it fun. I mean, you really make it fun. And I really enjoyed that. I mean, budgeting doesn't sound boring when you're talking about it. It's thank you. Fun. 
So I think that ladies and gents from the people here in the TNT community, I think you can learn a lot from Kate and I think you will enjoy her content. So please go on over there, check her out and just say, hey, TNT community in the house. And yes. Thank you. Somebody talking about creating an AA squad. AA what? Your own AA. <laughs> you must have missed something. Whatever. Okay. Your own AAA. Right. <laughs> oh, they must have been talking about something else. Hey, yeah, Denise I'm May. AA like either Alcoholics Anonymous or what? Like what? What? Okay. Anyway, so then um, it's time for the lightning round. I'm excited. It is time for the lightning round. So I have a banner that says that. All right. So for those of you that are here from the K-Squad, we always do a bunch of fun questions at the end, like pink or blue or cat or dog, that kind of thing. And she just kind of... So here we go. <laughs> so finish this phrase. Frugal people live below their means. Check your bank account daily or weekly? Daily. Weekly. <clears throat> weekly at the latest. <laughs> okay, so check your bank account what? Daily. Okay, minimalism or minimalish? Ooh, minimalish because you got to make it your own. Okay. Crock pot chicken pot pie or Swiss mushroom barbecue burger? Crock pot, baby. All right. Barnes and Noble. Or the local branch of the Maine State Library. Ooh. You're in Maine, right? I am in Maine. Okay. Yeah, if you can go to the library, do it. But I'm not I'm not mad at Barnes and Noble either. But yeah, the library's great. <laughs> All right. Old Navy or Goodwill? Uh, ah Old Navy. <laughs> Oh, oh lady. Lady. you guys hear it? She was like, oh, oh. I'm like, ah, give me oh, a heart. Lady. Lady. Okay, okay, good one. Dave Ramsey or Susie Orman? Oh, oh I that's another one. You've just given me the hard ones. Oh, I've got great things to say about Susie, but I'm going to go with Dave Ramsey. Okay, Dave it is. And use it up or throw it out. Ooh, use it up. All right, boom, lightning round is done. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? Your lightning round was so hard to come up with. I had to really think about that because I personalize it for each person. And uh, it was really hard to come up with. But I, I felt like I got some good ones. And you were acting like, oh, trying to decide. Yes. So, hey, good. <laughs> Oh, I want to thank you so much, Kate, for joining us. How can the viewers connect with you? I, my primary place is right here on YouTube under Kate Caden. I think she's got a link to my, my channel. Just type in Kate Caden. But I'm also very active on TikTok and Instagram. So please follow me over. Look up Kate Caden on Instagram and TikTok. I'd love to have you over there. I'm also on Facebook, but I really, I, I like Facebook too, of course, but I really enjoy Instagram and TikTok. So tell me, what do you do on TikTok? Are you doing a weird dance or something? Oh, what am I not doing on TikTok? I'm just kidding. No. So TikTok is, I, I do a lot of repurposing my videos to get people to understand what my channel is about. Mm -hmm. But I also do silly ones because I'm silly, you guys. And so I do some of the lip syncing ones, just like I'm, I'm, I'm silly. I just, I have fun over there, but I also like to educate in a fun way. Okay. All right. And then also um, you do, you also have what you call your K-Squad gear. <laughs> yes. And I, this is honestly, you guys know, or people have said, I have, I have like five of these and they're my favorite sweatshirts to wear. So yes, the K-Squad merch, if you ever want to be wrapped up in the K-Squad, it's like a giant hug. All right. So that's this one right here. Team Gert's got one. I know that. <laughs> okay. So you've got a lot of merch. I have to tell you when I look at all of this, you know, I, um, 
I, I think it's great that you're doing that because like you said, as a side hustle, as a single mom, even or stay at home mom, as a person that just needs more additional income today, I think having your own merch is a good idea. And that was why we started the apron line. I thought I wanted to have merch. Yes. I didn't realize that having merch and holding inventory was two different things, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm learning. I'm learning, but that's good. So again, you guys can be sure to check her out there. And uh, ladies and gents, for our question of the day, what is your takeaway? What are you going to do to make frugal living fun? Throw that answer in the chat box. And if you're here on the replay, put it in the comment section. But what are you going to do to make frugal living fun? Oh, and I have a website. <laughs> Sorry, I meant to say that too. KateKaden.com. Thank you, Blue Skies. I just saw that. <laughs> yeah, she keeps me on track. <laughs> so now, Team Gert said to you, Library. library Kate. <laughs> yeah. And then they also thought Goodwill instead of Old Navy. I'd have picked Old Navy myself. <laughs> All right. That's some nostalgia right there. Some Old Navy. Yep. So it sounds like Valerie has purchased quite a few things. Hi, Valerie and Rosie Bunny. I saw her earlier. All right. So people, um, how are you going to make frugal living fun? What what management or what change are you going to make in your lifestyle? And then, uh, Kate, I'm going to wrap things up. So you can either stay on as I wrap things up or you can sit in the waiting room. Your choice. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll sit for a few minutes. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm ready to wrap it up. So Just so I can right. hang out with you another minute after. Because I know you got to get Caden put to bed. So then as far as our announcements, one of the things I want to let you guys know is I do have some happy mail. I have a Christmas card that came from one of my viewers, Leanne Anderson. So thank you, Leanne, for sending me a Christmas card. I so appreciate that. I just love it when I get happy mail. And then I want to be sure to invite all of you guys back. Check out my video, my top 10 tips to gift wrapping or other vlogmas episodes you can just check that out in the there should be a link in the comment section if not i'll be putting one in there after the show is over but you guys know how to find me and um if you missed last week's episode with the minimal mom oh my goodness it was amazing be sure and check that out and then i've also got a free printable on 21 days to get your house ready for the holidays be sure and check that out if you need that and then next week's show, next week is going to be me and my co-host, Leon Dooley. We're going to be talking about planners and how you can help get yourself organized for 2022. And Kate, I'm sure planners are something that you probably also have in your life to help you stay organized. Well, oh, yeah. Addressing that. I'm going to be watching that. Okay, well, please do. And um, also, I'm going to be trying some new things for 2022. I'm going to be trying to do some new things that Blue Skies have been encouraging me to do. So next week, I'll be rolling out what some of those new things are going to be. And don't forget to visit us for CyberFest at www.aprondiva.com. So in the meantime, this is Denise Jordan saying, you are not done yet. Click on the link in the comment section below and check out another one of our homemaking stories, our homemaking with purpose episodes, or Vlogmas. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so now let's see. All right, I'm, there's some conversation going on. I'm not sure what that is, but we're going to leave we're, that. Oh, we're still live. Are we still live? Yeah, we're still live. I'm getting ready to uh, end the broadcast now, so going to see you guys later. I was going to see if anybody talked about how they were going to make um, their life more fun, but I didn't see them do that. So...